Michelle Dixie here coming to you from Spain on the Camino de Santiago. I just want to let y'all know that you're about to watch a pre-recorded version of a live Q&A that I did with my patrons through Patreon. We do these every so often just to kind of keep them updated on the journey as it's going on. But I do like to record them and post a lot of them on YouTube for the rest of the subscribers because I feel like there's usually some pretty good content in there especially if somebody's planning to hike the Camino in the future, or if you just wanna know more about the journey also. So I hope you enjoy. Keep in mind that this was streamed on Wi-Fi that might not have been perfect. So if it's not the typical video quality, that is why. Either way, I hope you enjoy. And if you wanna find out more about how to be involved in the next Q&A, you can find out in the video description below. From here, um, we have 71 miles. So in 71 miles, we will be in Santiago. And then that's like the finish point where you get your Compostela. And then Italy. Um, and then, no. And then we have to walk an extra 50 miles. And we're going to Fistera. We're going to walk to the ocean. And burn our clothes. Lee says, hola, congrats on reaching 400. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we've been making mile markers and been walking past them like normal. But this one, it was cold and rainy and we were having breakfast. Uh, but this one, we set up for or we wrote 400 on a napkin next to our toast. And we went <laughs> with our fingers <laughs> like they were walking like, past the 400. Yeah. You know. So on the table at the restaurant, because it was right at four, mile 400, the restaurant. So I wanted to draw some shoes on my little thing. Yeah, she wanted to draw shoes on her face. Like some little and, boots, but yeah, I was hungry. So, yeah. so far, so good. Still no bug bites. You want to show them your bites, though? Yeah. No more. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's red where she's Can been sitting see? on it, but no, not really. They're not there, guys. Oh, Come yay. On. What's What about the other one? They've been rough, though. Yeah, can I can a little bit there. Little yeah, bit. Oh, oh. yeah. Look, there you go, yeah. guys. Yeah, so thankfully no new right bites. So I think that we've like gotten them all done. Uh, there seem to be a lot of people on the trail. How does that feel compared to the solitude of the, the PCT, PCT and CDT? So the AT, there are a lot of people. You see a lot of people. Um, it does thin out after... Well, a good bit after Georgia, a good bit after Virginia, and then just kind of continues from there. Um, but uh, I was just talking to a guy earlier today that we ran into that was on the AT this year. He made it 120 miles, and then he quit. His knees were bothering him, so he took some time off, healed up a little bit, and then came to do the Camino. And um, so he's out here now, and, and he, uh, you know, mentioned, even though the AT has a lot of people it's not like this and you're not forced to be with people like in a town every night so you can you can choose solitude if you want or you can choose to be with people and out here you can have the solitude while you're walking mm -hmm. you don't have to walk and talk to people but you will see people it has been some sections have been like I gotta pee I gotta pee really bad and there are people coming non-stop and then you know finally you find a place or you get to a bar or something like that but um I think that it's important if you're not extremely extrovert to, um, and maybe even if you are, to, to budget in if you're going to do this trip a little extra for getting a private room every now and then. Because I, I feel like for your sanity, you need that place to spread out your stuff, to not hear other people farting, to not hear other people's weird noises when they brush their teeth. To not smell other people's feces coming from the bathroom. Um, to not um, hear other people snoring. We get a private room when I do the, the Q&As because doing it, trying to do this in a bunk room would be a nightmare. Okay. Hey Dixie, what is the one thing you regret not doing on this journey the most so far? And what will stand out the most positively for you so far? Oh, that's, that's a hard one. So, okay the as far as what I regret not doing honestly I can't um think of anything in particular that that I'm like man I really should have done that or oh I wish we had done that because we've had so much time I feel like we have done everything um 
only thing that I was worried that I would feel like that with. So maybe that's the best way that I can answer. Um, I was, I, I wanted to kind of see the, um, running with the bulls, the arena. <sighs> and I wanted to go in there and check that out and everything. But I don't know. Like I know I, and I mentioned this before. I know I eat cows. Um, I eat other animals. Um, you know, I've, I've hunted before I, I've, eating a deer and rabbits just because I figure I eat meat. So I need to keep that connection with, this is where my meat comes from. Right. So, um, and I, I don't know, I just, I can't, and I've always kind of wanted to do the running with the bulls. I thought it'd be cool. Like since I was in high school or idiotic or both. Um, but, but just <laughs> being there, uh, and I thought, well, I could at least go to the, festival you know and and be a part of it but but when I heard cheering when they're killing the bull I I couldn't stand that I couldn't I couldn't deal with that so I wanted to go in and tour that arena in a way um but in another way it's like no I'm, I'm still I don't supporting want to support it. it yeah yeah so um that was the thing that I thought I would have regrets but I really don't so um Glad because I know you I was, I was, I was having a tough time, wasn't I? I mean, I even got on and tried to reserve us tickets and then I was just like, no, I don't think I can do it. Um, and Thomas says, you just want to eat happy cows. <laughs> That's perfectly understandable. I mean, I just don't want to support like mutilation and, um, torturing an animal before it dies, I guess. Um, so anyway, and I know, I know that, that people who are vegan for the purpose of animals are like, it's all, it's all bad, you know? And I, I certainly understand their standpoint, but, um, but everyone has a line that they draw somewhere and I guess that's mine. So, um, but other than that, I, I mean, is there anything that you really wanted to do that, that we didn't? Yeah, there's been really nothing. Um, as far as the most positive experience, um, I don't know. We had one really good the night. Mona Lisa. The what? The Mona Lisa. Well, that wasn't, I mean, that was the I strip. Know. But not I, know. I know. No, I was going to say the night that we stayed at the Bastide, La Bastide. Mm. Like, just, I would say. That was just such a good atmosphere. Yeah. That that people, um, we, we stayed at this place called La Bastide. And it was at the halfway point, the town that considers themselves, you know, the halfway point where we got our halfway certificates. And, uh, and they, the, the, the albergue there was very nice, but homey still. And there were only four beds in a room and it was just the two of us and another man. Um, Mm -hmm. oh, I can tell them about the dude that I think that was, might've been doing heroin anyway. Um, so, so, uh, you know, that particular place was just, I don't know. It was awesome. And we had dinner there and the woman was from South Africa, um, but she cooked us dinner and we got to hang out and we were talking to people from, uh, Germany and a lot, well, a few, you know, two Germans, one guy that was from Belgium and one from the U S and the man from the U S I think I may have mentioned this to y'all before, but he died. Like he was dead, like no heartbeat. And then they brought him back. Um, and this is his way of kind of celebrating life again, I guess. So uh, just the conversations that we had that night. So I would say the, the people in general that we've met would probably will be something that I, that sticks with me. Um, what about you? No, for sure. Yeah. I, I think that was top notch. Yeah. Yeah. That, that place in it, particular. It was just a great atmosphere. And like for all of the six of us, what were there like six? Seven, I think, including oh, the lady, yeah, yeah, the lady yeah. who is yeah, she yeah. left late or early, but uh, yeah, the seven of us like having dinner, and I think that was her way of like trying out having dinner with the people, like making yeah. dinner, and yeah, like all that stuff instead of just like the pilgrim menu, yeah, because sometimes it feels um almost like cattle being like herded mm-hmm. through you know it's like oh check in oh okay do this okay we eat dinner now and the dinners are very much the same the pilgrims meals um so i mean um 
but this place was just different. And, and you might could go there and not have the same experience because it depends on the people too and the conversations you have. And, and, you know, the next day we talked to that man who's, or that fellow whose grandmother saw Hitler speak. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that just like blows my mind. So, um, so I would say that that probably stands out the most. And also the cathedrals have been incredible. Um, uh, what are you drinking out of? A platypus? A uh, bladder? I didn't even realize you did that. Yeah. <laughs> when you see me do it so much, it looks normal to you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So. But yeah, the cathedrals are really pretty. Yes. And and also, I think um, feeling more comfortable talking to somebody not in the language that I generally, not in my first language, you know, feeling a little more brave about that, I guess. Um, okay, Pete, when you finish, are you planning on more sightseeing or will you head straight home? So the plan is to move, to move, to sightsee the entire world, to move to Italy. <laughs> I know the plan is to, okay, it is Lee. Okay. A, All right. Which just making E's. sure, just making sure. Um, so the plan is to go to Italy, Rome. I want to see the Colosseum. I know I'm a tourist. I know that's like, you know, but I am, I am a tourist and to me, Traveling is like all the cliche things. And then the second time you remove a layer and then and then another and then another. And so we're on the first layer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so this, uh, yeah, this time will be the first layer. We're going to be tourists and we're going to see the Coliseum. And Montana wants to see it because go ahead and tell them. <laughs> They've got the Mouth of Truth, which is from... Roman Holiday, if y'all love Audrey Hepburn. She's much as I do. with Audrey Hepburn. So, so I anyway. I didn't think about it until I saw Audrey Hepburn. We're going to see and learn a lot more there, I'm sure, other than those two things. But, um, yeah, so that that's the main things that we, like we have in our minds. But, but, yeah, we were wanting to have a several weeks to be there. If we had finished this sooner, that was the plan. Um, but I think we'll still finish enough time to spend a few days in one spot and then, and then go home. Can you please compare the AT and the Caminos as to difficulty? Can you hike more miles a day? Um, yeah, well, yes, I think. If I wasn't here, yes. No, that's not, well, I mean, I, okay, if you weren't here, yes, I would not have done as few miles per day as we have. However, that doesn't mean that everybody can do more miles out here than on the AT, right? So so the guy, for example, that just left AT, it depends on on the issue, right, that you're, that you're having. Um, so that guy, his knees were bothering him really badly on, on the AT. But out here, it doesn't seem like they are. Now, if it was, you know, blisters and um, being out, uh, being in a drier condition helped the blisters, so you could do more miles there. So anyway, I'm just saying there there are trade-offs. The the road walking here and being on harder surfaces is harder on my feet than I would say other trails. But as far as physical difficulty, no, this is not um, near as as um, abusive to your body as the AT is, in my opinion. You you don't have the same amount of weight on your back. Um, probably, you know, if you're, if you're out here versus if you were at, if you were on a trail where you wanted to have a stove and several days of food and, um, water, cause there are a lot of water fountains out here and stuff. So, um, I think that you could do this and have less abuse on your body. You also have the ability to send ahead your bag. So if your goal was to knock out more miles, then yes, certainly I, I feel like you could. However, there is more temptation here. Like, towns exploring the churches exploring the culture learning about the history uh the food you know stopping and eating at bars there are more people that you're going to run into and probably want to talk to and you have more opportunity so to to kind of um shorten your day because you're like oh, i kind of want to stop here if i keep going i'm going to have to commit to three more r- miles right so you can't just go okay i really want to stop but i'm going to make myself do one more mile because there might not be a town in one more mile so so it's just trade-offs. But yes, I think um, physically somebody could do more miles per day out here if they wanted to, if that was their goal and they needed to do that. Because um, I guess they say most people do this or aim to do this in what, like 35 days? So, uh, and it's 500 miles. But um, but yeah, it's definitely not as steep as the AT. 
um, the, what you're walking on, the, the rocks and roots and whatnot, whatnot is not like the AT. So are the people with around you who have been with you since the beginning? No, not sure at all. Not. No, we haven't seen anybody f- from the beginning. We well, did Carmen. Carmen. One There's girl. There's one lady. One lady. We met her a week or two in. We met her like a week and a half in and we just saw her two mm, nights ago. Yes. Oh, the people were around. Um, there's this cool group. They're they're blind. They're from the Netherlands. And six of them are blind and six of them. So they're the six walkers that are legally blind and the six buddies, buddies. that they walk with. And they rotate each day, the buddy and the, um, and the walker. Uh, but how cool is that? Like, And they also didn't know each other. Yeah, they none all, of them like, know each met other up right before yeah. they came. But how cool the, the, this pilgrimage allows people to get out and do something and see some of nature, see some history, um, submerge themselves potentially in a different culture if they're not from here, and you know affords people who couldn't physically do something otherwise the chance to to do some of that. So I, I think it's it's really great. For and they that. were doing two. The last 200 miles? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't start where and, we did. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Last, or last 200 kilometers. Yeah, and all you have to do on this to receive your Compostela, so your certificate of you did um, what's required to complete it on the Camino Francis, is the last 100 kilometers. So from, sorry, from, from here. From where we're at right now. So, um, and, and two stamps a day. Yeah, two stamp, two, two seals. seals a day. Yeah, so you get a little credentials passport, and you get stamped where you stay and like where you eat, or if you um, go see a church. Yeah, show them the inside of that. And uh, boom! So this is our. We get second excited book. about them. Yeah, this, this is our second. Yeah. So we have a whole one whole book we, filled up on yeah. both sides. Yeah, it's. We have a lot. We, we collect them. I have a Dutch friend who is in a wheelchair and legally blind. She hits the local trails regularly. Mm, that is awesome. I like that. That is awesome. Yeah, because it's like, you know, then other people who don't have those challenges, it's like, oh, it's, why don't you get out? You know, oh, I'm tired. Well, oh, I'm in a wheelchair and, you know, blind, but I'm, I'm, but I'm still, I'm still doing it. Yeah. RJ says, have you had any problems with aggressive dogs on the Camino? We haven't. No, we did have this one dog that was chained up. Yeah, it a ran up and ago. like, like if the chain broke, it was coming for us. Yeah, like it would have been Cujo all over again. <laughs> it was rough, but <gasps> homegirl right here, she said, I said, because I thought I was, I was ready to get my trekking pole and whack me a dog. I love dogs, but I was fixing to knock it upside the head because I thought it was getting Montana, but it didn't. So. Mm. It loves me. I do love you. <laughs> Did you try the translator Spanish dict yet? It helped me pass my Spanish class in college. No, we, we mm-hmm. haven't tried that yet. Honestly, we haven't used the Google Translate in a while. Yeah, we've been doing it's pretty been good. a while. Yeah, we kind of have all the, the phrases and whatnots that we need now, or we, like, pick up on what people are saying. But um, if we struggle, we, we will try that. We should pull that up and check it out anyway. Marjorie says, Hola, ladies. Have you seen many families on the trail? Are families allowed in the bunk rooms? Yeah, as far as are. I know, yeah, I haven't heard anything about them not being. And I know that husbands and wives have been there. Um, we've only seen, what, like two kids? And they were, you yeah. said you saw one and then we saw that one in the we saw that little morning. Um, I think a lot of people are in school. Like a lot of kids are in school yeah. right now. Um. So, yeah, so there really haven't been many families, but uh, Deanna did it with her two sons last summer. So I know that people do it with their children. It's just, I think this time of year, there aren't, there aren't as many out here, but I haven't seen anything that says that, that you can't. And I know that there have been big groups that travel together. It works better, I think, if you plan ahead some, at least a couple days ahead to do reservations and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, they, they can definitely... Yeah, I know they're allowed in the bunk rooms because, yeah, Deanna took her son. Be interested to hear your thoughts on rain poncho versus j- rain jacket slash trousers with regards to comfort, dryness, getting wet from heat, condensation, and finally, if there's a switchover point for how cold it is. Thanks again. Enjoying your updates. Q&As as always. Okay, so the poncho thing, I only use like a cheap disposable poncho one time on the AT because my ring gear had holes in it. Um, we switched to these ponchos that we've been wearing on this trail for the trail. They're way too heavy in my opinion 
to want to carry on a through hike. Um, so I wouldn't probably, uh, but I know that they do make ponchos that are lighter weight than, than what we're carrying. So, um, so from my experience of using a poncho now, I, I, I like it. Um, I like that I can pull it up cause I can, I mean, when my pack's light enough, I can pee with my pack on. So I don't have to like shimmy britches down all that. I just kind of like bloop, pull, pull my skirt up and it's still pull the britches down, but like everything's not getting soaked so while I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, unless I accidentally pee myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> you thought it was funny. Anyway. So, I mean, cause I, it happens sometimes you pee I'm on your so feet or whatever. Jokes. <laughs> it's not a joke though that's the bad part I know I know, I know. Um, but so anyway um, yeah I, I do <laughs> like it I like so, yeah. that it's ventilated um, I haven't really felt as hot in it I think as I have the other rain gear because it's you know the rain pants do so if you're a hot natured person then a poncho is probably um, the way to go for you what kind mm. are those bright red ponchos? Honestly, I don't. Do you have yours? Mount. I don't know. Um, they just were sold here. Um, ponchos aren't fun in the wind, but that's a personal preference. Also, Good point. Also true. Um, what is it? A L T U S. A L T U S is the brand. But um, like I said, these are like really heavy, but they've kept us very dry. It's nice to be able. We put them over our packs, so these are extra larges. Um, so we just throw them over the pack, uh, also. So that's just another layer of redundancy for keeping your stuff, your gear dry. Um, so I, I really, I like the idea of a poncho and I'd be more open to try a more lightweight poncho now that I've had this poncho. So for what that's worth, I'm, you know, I, I just, I haven't hiked with a poncho before. So, uh, before now, but I can definitely see how it doesn't make you sweat as much as, the other rain gear could potentially. Um, and But I've been carrying an umbrella too, so I picked up a cheap umbrella. Uh, it was tough. The first town I looked in, we were finding only designer umbrellas, like with purses and, you know, fancy umbrellas. And I was like, no, 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 I just need a cheap one. But so I finally, I didn't know cheap in Spanish. How to be like, I want a cheap umbrella. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I remember, I think we looked it up. Yeah, but it was, but... It was too late. They just kept sending us to like handbag stores and stuff. But, um, okay. So I don't know the exact perfect spot between rain gear and poncho coolness and, and whatever, but, but I have enjoyed these ponchos. Um, I do like some of the rain gear I've used in the past that has like pit zips and the, the ones that have the little bill, like your rain jacket had. I like that, but, um, but yeah, I might, maybe I'll try a poncho for, for New Zealand so that I can like a lightweight backpacking poncho. I might, I might do that. Go ahead Just and write to, that on your little list. I know, right? On your little hand. Okay. Has Montana caught the backpacking bug? Any chances of her doing the PCT or the Appalachian Trail? No, <laughs> no, no. So she says that she'll go on, chance. she says she'll go on like a, um, a, uh, a, a shorter trip, like a weekend um trip or something like that but she yeah she's not yeah I don't, she says she's not mm-mm. doing the through hike so um so and that's fine that's okay it's funny because dakota said he wasn't either so it's like i don't know i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be talking people into through hiking and all of them are just like yep sure i never want to do that so maybe it's just me and jessica you are a bio oh my gosh a biophiliac is that what that mm-hmm. is and Montana is not. That's why you want to through hike, and she doesn't. What are you trying to say, Rhonda? What does that mean? What is a biophilia? I, well, I'm learning all these new things today, I guys. I feel she must I have just learned that. Ignorant word. humans possess an innate tendency, tendency to see connections with nature and others' forms of life. Yep. Yeah. You don't like to see connections with nature, Montana? No. Okay. You Whatever. You she says pleasure. she doesn't. She saves every snail. Every snail from I the past. I do not. I walked past some of them. Oh, okay. You saved 98% of the snails that I you walked walk past. past and the bugs them. and the beetles and all that stuff. All the critters. She saves them. She talks to the chickens. She talks to the cows. She does, y'all. 
but okay. Now I know what a bio biophiliac is. New Zealand, yes, Donald. New Zealand is next year, so that'll be in the fall uh, because their seasons are switched. So yes, I'll I'll be doing that one next year. On your previous trails, you would be in snow and freezing cold by now. Puts the rain into perspective, doesn't it? Yes, that's true. And what do I always say when you're like, oh, this sinks so bad. And I'm like, well, at least we don't have to sleep in it tonight. A lot of things have been put into perspective that I did already appreciate from doing the other trails. But it's so nice to, to have those things here. So when I start to complain about people farting a lot at night or something like that, then I'm like, but I'm inside, so it's pretty awesome. I'll take the farts. Um, but I do miss my tent at times in the solitude, and, and that's why I say one thing's not better than the other. It's just it's just trade-offs. Now, there was an interesting thing that happened in the bunk room that I didn't tell you all about, um, and it was the night that we woke up scratching and stuff. Uh, oh, oh, boy. There was a boy who was not cute. He was very... <laughs> He was very um, gaunt, uh, very tall and thin and and, and pasty, um, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. But he, and I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that he was a pilgrim even. I don't know. Um, I mean, he had a bag and everything, a backpack, but he didn't go to bed. Uh, he was up. He, he came in a couple of times and got things or he would do something and then he would leave again. I don't know where he went. I assume that maybe he had a girlfriend in another bunk room and he was, you know, hanging out with her or something. I don't know. Um, but Montana said she woke up a few times and he never went to bed. He then, had like, it was like three in the morning and he still was not there. Yeah. And then when we woke up, he wasn't there. Yeah. So, but at some point he came in in the morning and started packing <clears throat> his stuff up. And, um, I, you know, that look that somebody gives you. When, especially children, like when they're doing something that they don't necessarily want you to see, that they're trying to hide, I noticed him look up at us. And at this point, he hadn't spoken to us or said anything or, you know, acted like we were there, which is fine. You know, again, not everyone's uh, extroverted and wants to talk to people. So, but I don't know. It just felt weird the way he like looked up suddenly and showed interest in like, oh, maybe I hope they're not looking at me at what I'm doing. And so he, he took, um, like a an alcohol wipe and wiped his arm in an area where I don't know what else, like, I don't know what kind of medication you would shoot in your arm there in your veins. Um, but he was giving himself some kind, he was shooting something into his arm. So it could have been medication, I guess. Maybe y'all can enlighten me if you know of anything, but I mean, I know that with like insulin and other injections that, that, you know, the stomach, the leg, right. Not, not, not here in the bend of your arm. So, so I don't know what it was. Um, but nevertheless, that was interesting. You know, that was just something, um, that hasn't happened. And, you know, I don't think that like the Camino is unsafe or, um, anything like that. And I'm, and I mean, he's a grown adult. I think he can make whatever decisions, but it did make me sad for a couple of days. I thought about that. Um, just like, I hope that whatever, he needs in life that if he is walking the Camino that he finds that and kind of um, is able to to have a better life and, and step aside from that. But anyway, if that's in fact what it was, is drugs. But that was something that was just different that kind of stands out since since we talked to y'all last. Um, but we saw him at the bar later, like the that morning for breakfast and we waved to him, you know, and he waved and smiled and everything. But um, but yeah, we never talked to him. I don't know if he spoke English, honestly. Do you find that you're eating healthier than on your previous hikes? Oh. Okay, mm. at first, yes. Well, regardless, yes, because the food is more fresh at least. It's like fresh sugar instead yeah. of, <laughs> no. Um, lately, I, at the beginning, I did better. In the middle, I've gotten to where I just want sweets a lot. Um, and they, they don't serve like Eggs and bacon for breakfast isn't just as common as like toast and jam um, or croissants or something like that. So it, it's more sweet stuff is offered here in the morning for breakfast than, than the savory stuff that I would normally eat at home um, and that I would choose over sugar. So 
I would say in town on a regular through hike, I eat healthier than what I'm eating now on the daily, you know, more or less. And then, but in general, my diet throughout the week has probably more vegetables and fruits and healthier stuff than my diet in a week on a backpacking trip, if that makes sense. So I, I eat really horribly on trail while I'm backpacking and pretty well in town. But out here, it's just kind of like mediocre the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of balances out. But um, some places just don't have great vegetable options out here. It's like meat and bread and cheese. And yeah. That's, that's why you have to um, ask for like the veggies. But you certainly get there. more, you know, you can get more protein than, than you would um, on a backpacking trip more easily because you're not having to carry everything. Um I think I forgot to thank you for all the tips I used to take a crew to Philmont this year. We had a great check trek. Thanks. Well, I'm glad. Th- thank you for, for saying that. Um, yeah, I hope that the information helps. And I was talking to somebody else about that the other day at one of the albergues. Cause this, this one guy said that he had seen just my gear video on what I was taking out here. He watched right before he came out here. And, um, then there was another guy, uh, well, cause he was like, you, you said not to carry too much or, or you showed that you weren't carrying that much and I still carried way too much. And I said, so maybe you need to have a channel now so that you can tell other people, you know, hey, this is what I did and what worked. And he was just like, no, I, I don't feel like I'm experienced enough to tell other people what to do. And I was like, well, don't ever tell anybody what to do. You know, you tell them what Your you did opinion. and yeah, and, and why it worked for you, why it didn't, what you saw other people do that was different than what you did and why that worked for them. And and what you saw not work for a lot of people. And and it's okay to share those things. Everyone thinks that to share information, you have to be an expert, but you don't. All you have to do is share your experience and the things that you learn as you go. As long as you don't present yourself as, as an expert at something that you're not an expert on, then, and even experts, they, like it's just not one size fits all with any type of advice or recommendations anyway. So Um, I think people are afraid to document an experience because they don't like to look like they don't know what they're doing or like they don't know what they're talking about. And that's like the, one of the first comments that, um, was on the video of, of me talking about my gear on the Camino. Somebody said, how dare you share information, uh, and give advice to people when you haven't even done this yourself. And it's just like, no, I, I, I'm not giving advice. I'm I'm saying this is what I'm taking. Hey, let's see if it works out. And then at the end, I'll update that, you know. So um, I just think that, that people think that they can't share an experience or journey as it develops. But as long as you're not telling people, you know, do this, then I think it's okay. So, And I say that to Montana all the time. I'm like, well, this is what I did, but I don't know what you want to do. And like the way she packs her pack. And I feel like every time you ask me a question, that's what I, I said to you. Well, this is yes, what I do. You. And this is what... <laughs> And I'm like, okay. But because I don't want to preach. Mark says, hey, Jessica, any thoughts about doing trail magic again this coming spring on the AT? I would love to do that. I would love to do that. You know what would be cool? If I win. No, it would be really cool if we can do like a, well, yes, that too. I um, can't believe you just but like a, that. <laughs> if we did like a Patreon meetup type thing and did trail magic on the AT, would y'all want to do something like that? Would that be, would that be cool? I don't know. I just, like, you said that, and I'm just not usually not super busy. Um, spring on AC, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought about it. Like, we could have, like, a little party thing on the AT and do trail magic. Yeah. Maybe I should go ahead and start planning something like that. See, like, how many people yeah. would be interested, and then maybe we can figure out where to do it. It needs to be in a place where we can have a lot of people. So uh, not a question, but a huge thank you for sharing all of this with us all. Well, I hope some of it's helpful. I appreciate all of you being here and and caring about this. Mm-hmm. We just all learn from each other here. So this is awesome. Okay, bye, all right. y'all. Bye, guys. Bye. Ready? Okay. <laughs>